Now for both the exponential model and the linear model, we have given you examples now of uh, analytical solutions. We could work out the probability density function for the dependent variable. Um, we could treat that as a likelihood function by focusing on the parameters. And we could then find that um, value where the derivative of this function is zero and therefore the points uh, along this line of the parameter values that maximizes the likelihood of the data. And so we could an find analytical equations for the estimates. In many cases, however, where we use maximum likelihood, this analytical solution is not available. And then we use numerical optimization to find the right value. We will have a search algorithm in a computer where we try many different values of the parameters and each time we calculate the likelihood function and then we preserve the one where we found the highest value. So we search for the highest point as opposed to uh, finding the derivative and calculating the highest point. So in practice this is what we will often do and this is also what we will do in the lab and in the remaining of this uh, lecture. So we are now thinking of cases where we need to work out the likelihood function, but we do not have to worry about taking derivatives, equating to zero and finding the point that maximizes it. We just provide um, the likelihood function to the computer and ask the computer to search for the point that maximizes this function. So here's an example in R. If we know that the likelihood function for the linear model is as above, as we saw in the slides, then we can create a function in R Let's call it LL for log likelihood that has as input parameters both the data and the parameters and that then returns the log likelihood. And then we have a function called optim in R that can search for a maximum point in a function. So this optim function first needs some starting point values. In this case, we provide a sigma squared of one as a first estimate and beta values of zero as a starting point for our search. We provided the, the name of the function that needs to be optimized, LL. Then in this case we pass null. In some cases you can also pass a gradient function here. We will talk about that later. Then we pass all the other information that needs to be passed on to the log likelihood function, for example x and y. And then finally a few options, few parameters that need to be set. Uh, one thing is that the function scale needs to be, the function needs to be multiplied by one minus one because optim automatically minimizes a function, but we want to find the maximum likelihood. So by multiplying the likelihood by minus one, we find the maximum instead of the minimum. And finally, I will explain in the following slides what a Hessian matrix is, but we are just saying that we want the Hessian matrix. So as I said, optim minimizes the function that you give it. We want to find the maximum likelihood. So we multiply the likelihood always by minus one, and you can do that with this FN scale parameter. And secondly, um, sigma squared is always a positive value. We can only have a positive variance. Um, so we don't want optim to even search, even try to find negative values that might optimize the function. To do that, we trick optim a little bit. Um, we basically, instead of estimating sigma squared, we estimate the exponent of sigma squared. And that way, even if a ne negative value is tried, um, it will always lead to a positive value. But then we need to also take that into account when we look at the results of the estimation. Sometimes in the literature on maximum likelihood, you will see reference to the gradient vector or the score vector. So we might have cases where even though it is not straightforward to calculate the maximum, to find the maximum by equating the derivative to zero, it might still help the search algorithm to know the derivative. So sometimes we have a log likelihood function where we can work out the derivative of this function towards the parameters. Um, but we cannot just set it set equal to zero and find the uh, value that optimize, that maximizes the original function. But it might still help the search algorithm to know how steep the curve is at a particular point. If it is very steep, it moves further away uh, to find the maximum. If it's not very steep, it knows that it's closing in on the maximum and it will make smaller steps. So if we pass on not just the likelihood function, but also a function to show how steep this line is, uh, the derivative, this is called the gradient function. So a gradient of a maximum likelihood, uh, of a likelihood function is the derivative of the likelihood function towards the parameters. So it shows you 
um, how rapidly the likelihood changes in that particular point if you slightly change the parameters. So the derivative of the likelihood will tell you something about the steepness of the likelihood function. It will tell you how quickly in a particular point the likelihood changes if the parameter changes slightly. The second derivative will tell you how quickly this slope changes when you change the parameter slightly. And so it will tell you something about how curved the likelihood function is in that particular point. This is particularly interesting at the point that maximizes the function at the estimated parameter values, because if that is very curved, then it means that we have a very clear peak in the uh, likelihood function. And therefore we are probably quite certain about our estimate. We know that that is really is where the maximum is. If the second derivative is low, it means we have a more shallowly curved function and it means that we are more uncertain about our estimate because we know that the function is maximized in that particular point, but it is actually also quite high if you, if you vary these parameters slightly. So if you vary the parameters a bit, you will still get a high likelihood. You're still very likely to observe this data. If the curvature at that point is very high, so the slope changes very rapidly, it means that you are at a more narrow hill um, and it means that if you change the parameters slightly you get a very much lower likelihood of observing the data and so we are much more certain about our estimate. So this Hessian matrix at the point of the estimated value tells you something about the certainty you have around your estimate. Sometimes you will also see reference to the information matrix which is the variance covariance matrix uh, of the score vector of the gradient. Um, and there is a clear relationship between the Hessian matrix and the information matrix, which is that asymptotically, as the sample size gets large, the information matrix is uh, the negative uh, Hessian matrix. So both of you tell you similar information. They tell you something about the amount of curvature at any point in the likelihood function. And if that point is your estimated, uh, your maximum likelihood point, the point where, where you estimate the parameters to be, then both the information matrix and the Hessian matrix will tell you something about the level of uncertainty. And asymptotically, as the sample size gets large enough, they will give you the same information about that certainty. So numerical optimization algorithms that you do not have to worry about how they work, there are several that are there, but they can use this information. If you have just the likelihood function, it will just keep searching for the maximum. Uh, for example, if it improves, it will keep going in that direction. If it disimproves, it will go in a different direction. Um, and if you can also pass the gradient, you pass more information on the direction of travel for this search. If you know, if you, like imagine you are in the Wicklow Mountains and trying to find the peak of a mountain. If you just know, have no information, just know how high you're standing, you can step a meter forward and a meter backward and see which one is higher and then keep going in that direction. Or if you already can see how steep it is, you can go you know to how, what direction to go uphill and you can see how you can keep improving. So this is a bit how these numerical algorithms work. They try to search by trying different points um, on a slope until they find the maximum, the, the highest point. So I find this an easy way to imagine it. Just imagine you are sort of blindfolded in the Wicklow Mountains and told to find the peak of the mountain and imagine how you would go about searching. And then you get a little bit in the direction of how these algorithms are doing this. They can't see the mountain, they can't just simply walk to the peak, um, but they can, if you're blindfolded, you would have some sense of whether you go up or down and you would be able probably to find maybe the peak. Yeah? And this is a bit how these algorithms work. So we saw earlier with the variance of the error term in the linear model, that the maximum likelihood estimate is biased but consistent. It is slightly off from the optimal estimate, but as the sample size increases, it gets closer and closer to the true value. Um, and as at infinity, it converges on the correct value. And so we know typically for maximum likelihood estimates that this is what they feature. They can be biased in small samples. They might have give slightly biased answers, but they are consistent. As the sample size increases, they converge on the right answer. They are also asymptotically efficient in the sense that as the sample size increases, they will find the lowest amount of variance, the greater certainty around our estimates. Um, and we know that these parameters tend to have a normal distribution asymptotically. So that means that we can perform a z-test 
to um, do significant tests on the coefficient because we assume they are normally distributed because we know that asymptotically they are. And so when you come up with new likelihood functions, you can straightforwardly apply maximum likelihood and typically assume that these properties hold. Um, and that makes it a very flexible approach because it means that when you have an estimator where you don't really know how to estimate it, but you can work out the log likelihood function, then you can use Optim to come up with maximum likelihood estimates and assume that these have normal distributions. So you can use the Hessian matrix to assess the uh, uncertainty work out the standard errors, as we will see in the next few slides, um, and then do a z-test on the parameters to see for statistical significance. So we have a nice framework to estimate parameters, uh, estimate standard errors, perform tests. So one can work out the variance of the estimates asymptotically as the sample size goes to infinity. And one can show that this is the inverse of the information matrix. So that is the variance covariance matrix of beta. If you want to work out just the standard errors for each individual coefficient, we can look at the square root of the diagonal of this matrix. And we also know that asymptotically, um, the Hessian matrix is the negative information matrix or vice versa. So that means we can work out the Hessian matrix, take the negative Hessian matrix, invert it, and we have our variance covariance matrix. And we can then take the diagonal and take the square root of this diagonal and we have our standard errors. And so this is what we do in when we use Optim. When we use Optim, we ask the computer to provide not only the estimates, but also the Hessian matrix. And when we have the Hessian matrix, we take the inverse of the negative Hessian matrix to get the variance covariance matrix and the square root of the diagonal to obtain the standard errors.